our large area search rope bags consist of 200 feet of nine and a half millimeter rope with markers and rings located every 20 feet within the rope for a total of 200 feet. The search line is all housed in a mail carrier style bag with a breakaway adjustable shoulder strap. Along with the main search line, there's also two additional self-retractable hound bags with six millimeter rope for a total length of 20 feet a piece. In the three person RIC deployment formation, position number one is in charge of rope deployment. Although their primary objective is to control the search rope bag, it is imperative that they have good situational awareness skills as they may potentially be leading their RIC crew through little to no visibility. Along with good situational awareness skills, it is imperative that this crew member communicates depth, distance, and direction of travel to the entire RIC crew. Along with the search rope bag, this crew member must also carry a set of mass loops as well as a personal escape tool. Position number two will be your company officer or RIC leader. This crew member is located on the right shoulder of the rope deployment person for a left hand etiquette. Their primary objectives will be accountability of the RIC crew as well as communication with all crew members. They will also be carrying the tick which will allow them not necessarily to be married to the search line to check void spaces within the search area as well as direction of the search line deployment. Along with the tick camera, this member will be required to carry one of the retractable tether lines or tag lines as well as a set of mass loops or webbing and a personal escape tool as well. Position number three, typically your firefighter will be in charge of the rick sled as well as any additional equipment. Their primary objectives will be to carry the rick sled and also one of the retracting hound lines to perform a tethered search off the main search deployment line. Along with the rick sled and self-retracting tether line, they will be responsible to carry a set of mass loops as well as a personal escape tool. Prior to entering the building, the company officer should ensure that all members of the RIC crew have been properly briefed on the information discovered during the RIC size up, including the name and the last known location of the downed firefighter or firefighters, as well as the tasks that were being performed when the mayday was called. The company officer should also ensure that all members of the RIC crew are on the proper radio channel. Now that it is time to begin the rope deployment, the firefighter in charge of the rope deployment needs to ensure that there's a proper anchor established outside the building. Ideally, the anchor is approximately 10 feet outside the building and approximately three feet outside the ground. A company identifier of the RIC crew on that search line shall be placed on the end of the rope outside the building. Once inside the building, the company officer should stop the crew at an ideal location to determine where the pass is sounding. They should also use the tick to look for the downed firefighter as well as doors, or any obstacles that may be in the way. During this RIC deployment, the RIC team should move directly towards the pass alarm or the last known location of the down firefighter, which is called the point-to-point -point search. Crew members should enter and maintain on the line with the search rope in their left hand. While advancing the search line, the RIC crew will come across a set of markers which are indicated by a ring first, which will always lead out of the building, followed by a set of knots. Each knot is equivalent to 20 feet of length in the search line and should be used for situational awareness. As the first firefighter in the RIC crew comes across these markers, the corresponding amount of knots should be communicated and the command should be repeated by all members of the RIC crew. It is important that the firefighter in charge of rope deployment keeps tension on the line at all times. They can do this by ensuring that the line is coming from the front of the primary search bag. Also, in order to maintain tension or if deploying into an area that may not be meant for foot travel, use solid objects as a change of direction point. This step to wrap or tie off the search line may be necessary. However, keep in mind that this will delay the deployment.
If you are unable to readily clear a location within the search area with the TIC camera, you must tether into the main search line with the tag lines to perform an additional search. The ideal location to tether into the main search line would be one of the rings located every 20 feet on the search line itself. These rings are ideal because they are quick, easy, and they prevent duplicate of efforts and low to no visibility. If a ring is not readily available, the additional option would be to create a friction wrap on the search line itself and clipping back into itself on the tag line to perform that additional search. Once the downed firefighter is located, the rescuer deploying the search line will move past the downed firefighter and tie off or wrap the search line. This rescuer should tie off the line about five feet to one side if possible and pass the rick. This will ensure any other crews deploying will not have any issues locating the downed firefighter. While the search line is being tied off, the company officer will begin scanning the area for alternate means of egress or extrication. This is also being done while the third rescuer will begin their pack hand assessment. As the two RIC teams meet on the search line, the RIC team entering the building will then step over the line straddling it to help keep it taut as they assist the crew exiting down the line. When the two company officers meet face to face, a brief turnover report will be given to help prevent duplicate of rescue efforts.